This is it. It's Rachel with Pretty and Plants. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all so, so much for coming back. Um, and so here we are. We're going to talk about overwintering your plants and a few other things. So my show is going to become more of a chat session about LECA because every week now I'm just having different issues. I want to show you all some plants. So let's get started. Okay, so before I talk about overwintering, I want to bring back my peace lily and kind of give y'all an update. I left the ugly leaves on her, three yellow leaves, a couple of curly leaves, but for the most part, she is actually doing pretty well. And I'm totally threw out Rachel's rule book for the peace lily. My rule book is starve your plant of water until it's dying of thirst and then feed it. And this plant, hated my LECA rules and acted like it was dying. So the peace lily is the easiest house plant. It like fades and then, it, and it goes back up when you water it. It faded within a few hours of me putting it in LECA. I watered it lightly, faded a few hours later, watered it again, a little heavier, just plain water. It faded again. And finally I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give you a reservoir I don't have much to lose financially on you. I'm gonna go for it. And just did a plain water reservoir and she loved it. And I was like, oh, so this plant, it seems to be okay with you going straight from, um, you take all the soil off, you put her down in LECA and you actually give her a little bit of a reservoir. She did not take to being dry very well. So this is the state of Texas. See the state? And the kitty is where I live. So San Antonio is south central, central south. And you're getting into zone 8B or zone 9, which is getting pretty close to Mexico. Um, if I lived up here even, overwintering, I would be better at professionally giving advice and overwintering. Because I live here, I don't have the best advice because my plants, it is still 90 degrees outside and humid. We do have, we do have winter days. I want to tell y'all though, when I was doing more orchids, the rule on orchids, uh, kind of the general loose rule was um, Halloween through Valentine's Day, not to water them, to let them have a rest. And I keep that kind of in the back of my mind for plants and LECA as well. Not that you don't water them, but they just need so much less water. They kind of, a lot of them kind of have a dormant period. So keep in mind Halloween through Valentine's Day, especially if you want to not transfer a plant during that time period. I transferred tons of plants last winter, right in the middle of winter, they actually did okay, but I also lost a few plants. Um, and the one thing that'll help you with that is humidifiers if you're in a really dry environment. I go heat mats, which I have linked down below. The Ficus Altima. Okay, Ficus Altima is the, the Latin name for this one. She is amazing in LECA. Um, I'm gonna give you my story. I have killed maybe two. I've had three. I think I've killed two of these in LECA. And the reason was um, they like a lot of light. Um, anytime I backed it away from the window, they get sunburned, which I wanted to show you all that. This is a leaf. Um, this is my rugosum. I put him outside to separate him from the other plants because I finally realized he had a pest and he got a nice little sunburn. So that is the problem with this zone right here. You get sunburns really easily. That is a sunburn. Um, and it's it was better. It was a lot more vibrant yellow and brown. Now it's starting to fade off. It really stresses out a plant to get sunburned. So I brought him back inside and just... But my ficus audrey, talking about overwintering, I did her in the middle of December last year. It was the worst time of year. I think it was early January. The ficus audrey that lived and did the best. And the reason she did well, these plants hate to be overwatered. 
she started doing well and I have her by a window. And so I took her away from the window where I was just kind of like, okay, let's get you enough light until you take off. And I moved her to another corner where she has some artificial light, just not as much sun. And lo and behold, I have a little bit of some root rot. The way that you will be most successful in Lekka is always air on the dry side. So if it gets a yellow leaf, you're like, okay, I know for sure that that's too dry and now it's losing leaves. And the Audrey's okay if it loses a couple of leaves from being too dry. The second you water her, she will bounce back. The dry roots and the dry Lekka, I think what I did with her is I gave her one watering because um, she had been dry, but then I didn't water her for a good four weeks. Now, having said that, that was a tree. So that Audrey, I was afraid to kill her. She was a tree. I waited four weeks before she finally started getting first one yellow leaf, then a second. I get up to six yellow leaves and I was like, okay, she's for sure dry. And then I carefully watered her from above again no reservoir. I did no reservoir for three months on her. Now that was a large tree. You're going to scale all of this down. If you have an Audrey uh, with two leaves or something, you know, it's not going to be a full month. It could be a week. Um, but you're, you're able to regulate the water really, really well. That's where the power is on your side. The main thing with the Audrey is you want her to have lots of light. So that is the key. And what happened with this one, the reason it has root rot is the light. I had moved it away from the window with light to a window uh, with a little light and just like um, a, a plant light underneath her. And I don't think she likes that. So I moved her back to the really sunny, sunny window. Now my sunny window has, I have a huge sunny window, but it has tinting on it. And the tinting keeps any plants in front of that window from being burned. So I get to put my plants real close to that window and they do amazing. Next thing on my chat is, and I'm gonna talk about this because I do this all the time. So one of the pros to LECA is your plants are lighter. Um, and one of the cons to lighter plants is they, if you're clumsy like me, you can tip them over really easily. So this is my answer to that. Here is the dustpan, and it's just like generic dustpan, but I like to use, oh look, there's still, can y'all see? There's still a liquor ball like stuck in my, so what I do is get, I get this on the tile and it gets it right up into this, and then can dump it back in the plant or put it in my used LECA. I just ditched over a huge plant today and I'm constantly um, knocking over my own plants. If you're nervous about transferring a plant, so let's say your deadline is October 31st is your like, okay, it needs to be transferred. So October 1st, which is coming up, that would be that week, that first week of October would be the last plants you're gonna transfer into LECA and then, um, and then, you know, by hopefully by the end of October, now it's kind of adjusted a little bit. Um, I probably will keep converting plants all winter long because I just can't help myself. Um, and I had success last winter. Um, I got a Thai constellation in um, January of last year. It did get some root rot in the soil. I kept it in the soil because I was nervous. And then when I took it out of the soil to kind of check, it had root rot. So I was like, <gasps> so I took it out of the soil in February and I went ahead and put it in LECA, but I put a lot of humidity and then I put it on a warm pad for probably two months and it didn't do anything. It didn't have any new growth. It didn't show any signs of happiness. Same thing with the Audrey. When I converted in the winter time, it did not show any signs of growth for several months. And the only signs it gave me is those yellowing leaves when it would get dry. No new growth, no nothing. And then just about a month ago, it got 50 leaves and suddenly just pushed out all of this new growth. There's no new signs, that's a good sign. Um, and you just have to be patient, wait, wait, wait. Keep providing it lots of light, 
lots of humidity and your plant will finally just stabilize. Um, finally, my last thing is my olive tree. I would water it and then the reservoir would be full and I would take it out of the pot that it was in and let it sit there for a week or two and then I would just put it in the wet pot. And then the two days later, I would take it out and put it on the porch again. This spring, that olive tree totally, totally took off. So it was a very sloppy way of doing LECA. It was a very sloppy planting. I planted wrong. I probably gave it nutrients the whole time. I don't even know what I did. It was one of my first ones to do. It survived the winter outside and it actually did great in the spring. Um, so, and I've had other olive trees I transferred in the summer that didn't do as well. So um, there's no perfect way to do LECA. So I wanna encourage y'all, make sure you read down in the comments below some of my videos. People have left really good tips and tricks. And if you have tips and tricks, leave them yourself for others because we're all kind of in this together. We're all wanting the LECA life for all of our plants, wanting the growth. And um, if you have plants that are dying or have died on you, let, this is the club that we're all in. We're all, uh, I, I don't know one person who started putting their plants on LECA that hasn't had quite a few plants die. Um, even Plantarina, um, said that and she, all her plants are mostly in dirt, but she said that when she started her plants, she loved plants so much. She wanted to learn about them, but she had quite a few plants in dirt die on her just cause she, it, there is a learning curve to all of this. So just know you are in good company because I have killed quite a few plants myself and I'm continuing to kill some plants, but I, uh, I am more confident now than I was a year ago. Okay. Hope y'all enjoyed that video on overwintering. Can't wait to see you next time. Love you. Bye-bye.